that we're going by airplane. We're going by bus on the short trips. I just can't sleep. I've tried everything, sleeping pills, drink. Audio's okay? Sex, everything. Sex time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mic check, mic check. Can we get you to talk, Ray, for a second? Yeah. I've tried everything from okay. sleeping pills to sex. Nothing's happened. That's my brother in the background. <laughs> okay, things. first of all, Ray, Talk to the people at Feyline here in town. They say your new album has been shipped this week. Uh, right. Give the people what they want. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, uh, well, exactly what it says. It's called Give the People What They Want. And there's a little side uh, thing inside the album which says we hope that people get, everybody gets what they deserve. It's a kind of aimed at... Uh, uh, I don't know, it started off being aimed at te television. Shut up, Dave! <laughs> That's my brother, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, it uh, started off being aimed at the media because of all the amazing shows they have on people doing feats, you know, amateurs, throwing themselves from the top of buildings mm -hmm. just for entertainment. But now, now, now it's developed into more than that. You know, all albums change as you make them. Right. But, but give the people what they want. We've been doing on stage for about two years now. Well, you, you guys, <coughs> you guys as a group uh, seem to have maintained your I mean, your credibility over the years. It's, Don't you, say dignity. You know, I won't say dignity. But you have a real you have a real diverse audience. I mean, people <laughs> people you know, thirty five year old people, thirty five years old love you. I mean, sixteen years old you know kids love you. I mean, you, yeah. you see all sorts of different crowds here at the show. What yeah. you know? What do you think? What I think we've changed. Well, what what happened that three or four years ago? We we changed back to being a rock and roll band again because that's what we started out doing. With you really got me in all day and all the night, mm -hmm. and uh, we we kept the same format. And uh, that with kind of the lyrics I put in, I think I'm a stronger lyric writer than I'm a melody writer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think people come to see like to come and enjoy themselves and and rock. So you because, think because a lot of people <coughs> miss that boring time in the 70s when it was all. Big saying big stadiums, but the people used to just stand there and play mm -hmm. and say, "Hey, look at me! You know, I'm a big rock star." But as you can see, I'm not. I'm nothing to look at. I just play music and enjoy it. And the rest of our band—that's what we're all about. So, would you say, like, when you did, when you were getting away from mm -hmm. rock and roll, we're talking about songs like uh, Superman, or is that is that is that something like out of the rock? And Superman roll? was more, more my disco even. Yeah, rocking. Superman as a record was was made. I've always admired Superman comics. And I went to see the film uh, when it came out at Christmas, that Christmas three years ago, and I was overwhelmed by it. I thought it was so true, so true to the comic books. And I wanted to write, I wanted to write a kind of a rock disco, because I hate disco music as a rule. But no, I just kept, I kept the pulse. Yeah. This but, is the disco version. But now, yeah, but now, now we've got to sort of mix it with a rock and roll backbeat, and it works real well. And tonight we do it as it's more of a rock number than ever now. Yeah. There is one song you've done the last couple of times that's sort of a reggae, you, uh, apart from the record. Till the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, we'll and do that tonight. Terrific, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. When sometimes when songs are written and I produce the stuff, I'm not always the best person to decide how they should be done. Okay. And that involves when we do stuff on stage, there's stuff on the new album like Around the Dial that we open with. It's about a kid looking for a decent radio yeah, station. Yeah, yeah. And the whole opening of the show, there's a big opening that I've made up of different stations and sound effects. And uh, it goes in straight into that number. You seem to have kind of a, kind of a, almost like a, a cult following on your, the base of your fans, pretty much. It's kind of, um, amazing thing was, on the first part of this tour, we didn't have, well, the album, Gives the People, just come out. And we've done, already done four weeks, and it's all been sold out. So it hasn't been any help from the album. It's just that they like to come and see the shows. Yes, and I think there are a lot of well. bands now that, that, that are doing that, that just try to give good rock and roll shows. How is, how, what kind of response have you had on the tour? How's it been going for you? Brilliant. It's been great. Have, have you been holding up? I just you said a minute ago you're, you're having trouble sleeping. How, well, what, yeah. about, what about life on the road? I mean, uh, yeah. is, it, is it rough on your body? To, to yeah, it's rough on the old mince pies, eyes. Uh-huh. That's what, what call, that's what we call eyes, yeah. <laughs> Dodgy, on the old flannels. The ears too. But, the, it, but the, the worst thing is sleeping and adjust. I, I don't eat meat, I eat fish, but I don't eat meat. My brother doesn't eat meat. I love seafood. And, yeah, but, but it's difficult to adjust because America is a sort of a steak, and orient and hamburger. 
Whereas you can get hamburger at two in the morning, you can't always get um, vegetarian quiche. Well, is this, <laughs> is this tour thing kind of a resurgence? Like, what about in the, the early days? Were, were you not banned by the American Federation of Musicians and the kind of, you just kind of said, yeah, we had a disagreement. And you just kind of like, you, you just, mind a disagreement with a man. What, 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 was the the problem, what, what, what was the problem with you guys? Um, same problem that I've got now. Anyone can see that, you know, I've got a problem. I think the problem was that we, we, we're kind of a tight unit. Well, I think all bands that make it, all bands that really go all the way, do sort of give up the day jobs and they go at it and it's them against the world. And unfortunately, in our case, it was a little bit too extreme and we upset a few people. And um, I think we were unfairly banned. Oh, and, and, and in the end, I had, to si I had to sign a letter of apology that was untrue. But it, but it helped, and we got back. And we, but we missed out on about three, three and a half years of our career. That, that led to the God I, Save the King's kind yeah, of evolution, right? I think that helped. Helped oh, us mm -hmm. a lot over here. It was like a rallying cry. Or yeah, that. because you know what happened? We had to start all over again. We had to start playing in little clubs. You know, and that for a group that had, had 16 big hits all over the world, that's a very tough thing to do. So now we built up our album following again. Would you ever play in front of a joint like this in, let's say, an intimate club of like? Well, I'd say this people. is a pretty good joint. It's a bit of payday, I would presume, uh, I think right? To here tonight, we're going to have trouble with the bass end because there's going to be a bass boom. We'll be trying to get rid of it. But usually, I think the compliments we've had from kids at first, they say, "We're not going to come and see you if you play big halls." But then they come, and the kids, even right at the back, because we've got a really good sound. I think they enjoy it just as much. What about the early days of the of, <clears throat> of the King sound? Kind of that fuzzy, kind of kind of guitar. Was the folklore has it that that uh, your brother blew an amp or something playing all day and all the night or something? Yeah. You all just kind of no, sat we, around. We, and said, we used yeah, to I listen like to a way. station called Radio Luxembourg. It's the only good rock station we could get in England. You know, our transistors, mm -hmm. and uh, I used to hear Chuck Berry records and it sounded distorted because it was a bad frequency. So Dave got his amplifier, a little 30 watt amp, and he got a preamp which was 6 watts and he stuck needles to distort it. And then he preamped that into the bigger amp and got that sort of farting sound. Well, I, nearly <laughs> said, I nearly said fart. It's Thanks. got that really raw sound that, 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 that we became sort of known for. And then after that electronics got involved and people invented the uh, fuzz boxes and that, which aren't as good. I much prefer to use valve amps and things. Do you guys kind of consider yourself kind of the, the standard bearers for, let's say, British music? I mean, a lot of other, you seem to be like the most British of British bands. You've kind of endured. Other, other English bands come over here and right away they want to buy a you yeah. know, UCLA sweatshirt and go have a yeah. cheeseburger. Well, yeah. this, this um, I'm not sponsored at all, except for the people that gave us the, they saw me wearing um, sneakers on stage and they gave us these but we don't wear them on stage so they don't give us them anymore. Oh, those are made in Oregon. This was made in England. This tie was made I think in China. <laughs> so, um, you know. And this shirt was second hand and I got it for six dollars in Seattle. He's so, really a national kind of a guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. But um, I, think, I think people still think of us as being British because that's in our music, you know, the, the, the dialogue, you know, I just said a few English rhyming slangs that probably, you know, every, like Chicago's got a certain way of speaking, the, the Western people have, I think it's uh, natural to be like that. But, but I'm not becoming completely Americanized, I hope anyway. Who wrote the first rock opera, you or Townsend? Um, I was working on Arthur. Arthur, the album, not the movie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love the movie too. Yeah, but the album. <laughs> the, album. I was, the thing is, I was commissioned to write a first rock opera by a TV station that went out of business halfway through, and uh, I spent a year and a half doing that. And Pete came along and put out Tommy, and uh, I, I think he did a good job. And you can't. It, it's like the old thing: who's going to get to the North Pole first? Right. I was Scott of the Antarctic. <laughs> <laughs> who, who do you